airframe and this is just to help you guys pass your final test uh, right now we are on airframe inspection we have 13 questions and right now I'm gonna have my assistant read for me this was so I don't have to read but if you guys want you guys can read try to answer the question before I do airframe inspection 13 questions enlist 17 items tap to activate and if at any point you guys feel that I'm going too fast you guys can always pause if you guys feel that I'm going too slow you guys can always fast forward and don't forget to subscribe this way so it can uh, be easy for you guys to search for all the subjects that are on this channel and let's begin question 1 of 13 which statement is correct regarding an aircraft that is found to be unairworthy after an annual inspection due to an item requiring a major repair assuming approved data is used to accomplish the repair not selected, an appropriately rated mechanic or repair station may repair the defect and approve the aircraft for return to service. Radio button. Selected. Not selected, an appropriately rated mechanic may accomplish the repair, and an EA may approve the aircraft for return to service. Selected. Selected. EXPL. If an aircraft is found unairworthy after an annual inspection because of a discrepancy that requires a major repair, the repair can be made by an appropriately rated mechanic. However, the aircraft can be approved for return to service only by a mechanic holding an inspection authorization EA. Reference, 14 CFR 43.7. Okay. Next. Question 2 of 13. Which statement is correct when an aircraft has not been approved for return to service after an annual inspection because of several items requiring minor repair? Not selected, an appropriately rated mechanic may repair the defects and approve the aircraft for return to service. Selected. EXPL. If an aircraft has failed an annual inspection because of several items that require minor repairs, the repairs can be made in the aircraft approved for return to service by an appropriately rated mechanic. The mechanic approving the aircraft for return to service does not need to hold an inspection authorization. Reference, 14 CFR 43.7b. Okay. Next. Question 3 of 13. Airworthiness directives ADs are designed to notify the Not selected, aircraft owners and other interested persons of unsafe conditions and prescribes the condition under which the product may continue to be operated. Radio button. Selected. EXPL. ADs are published by the FAA as amendments to 14 CFR Part 39.13 and apply to the following products, aircraft, engines, propellers, and appliances. The FAA issues ADs when an unsafe condition exists in a product, and is likely to exist or develop in other products of the same type design. Reference, FAA H8083-31. Okay. Next. Question 4 of 13. Where would you find the operating conditions that make a 100-hour inspection mandatory? Not selected, 14 CFR Part 91. Selected, EXPL. The operating conditions that make a 100-hour inspection mandatory are found in 14 CFR 91.409B. Reference, 14 CFR 91.409. Okay. Next. Question 5 of 13. The maximum time a 100-hour inspection may be extended is... Not selected, 10 hours. Selected, EXPL. 
A 100-hour inspection time may be extended for up to 10 hours, but these extended hours must be subtracted from the next inspection period. Reference, 14 CFR 91.409. Okay. Next. Question 6 of 13. An aircraft that is due an annual inspection may be flown. Not selected, if a special permit has been issued for the aircraft. Selected. EXPL. An aircraft due for an annual inspection may be operated if the FAA grants a special flight permit. A special flight permit is usually issued for such purposes as moving the aircraft to a point where the annual inspection can be performed. Reference. 14 CFR 91.409. Okay. Next. But. Question 7 of 13. Where would you find the recommended statement for recording the approval or disapproval for return to service of an aircraft after a 100-hour or annual inspection? Not selected. 14 CFR. Selected. EXPL. The recommended statement for approving or disapproving an aircraft for return to service after a 100-hour or annual inspection is found in 14 CFR 43.11. Reference, 14 CFR 43.11. Okay. Next. Question 8 of 13. Radio equipment installations made in accordance with supplemental type certificate data require approval for return to service. Not selected, by the holder of an inspection authorization, radio button. Selected, EXPL. A radio equipment installation made in accordance with a supplemental type certificate can be approved for return to service by the holder of an inspection authorization. The information included with an STC is considered to be approved data for this alteration. Reference, 14 CFR Part 43. Okay. Next. Question 9 of 13. Large airplanes and turbine-powered multi-engine airplanes operated under Federal Aviation Regulation Part 91, General Operating and Flight Rules, must be inspected. Not selected, in accordance with an inspection program authorized under Federal Aviation Regulation Part 91, Subpart E, rate selected. EXPL. Large airplanes and turbine-powered multi-engine aircraft operated under 14 CFR Part 91 must be inspected in accordance with one of the inspection programs authorized under Subpart E of 14 CFR 91.409 E and F. The inspection program specified in 14 CFR 91.409 E and F are not the progressive inspection covered in 14 CFR 91.409 D. Reference, 14 CFR 91.409. Okay. Next. Question 10 of 13. An aircraft may be flown beyond the 100-hour inspection requirement to reach a place where the inspection can be accomplished, provided it. Not selected, has a special flight permit, radio button. Tap to toggle. Not selected, does not exceed 10 flight hours, radio. Selected, EXPL. An aircraft that is due for a 100-hour inspection can be flown to a place at which the inspection can be done. A maximum of 10 hours beyond the 100-hour period is allowed for this purpose, and the time flown beyond the 100 hours must be subtracted from the time the next inspection is due. Reference, 14 CFR 91.409. Okay. Next. Question 11 of 13. For an individual, not a repair station, to conduct a complete 100-hour inspection on an aircraft and approve it for return to service requires a mechanic certificate with Not selected, airframe and power plant ratings. Selected, EXP. 
A person must hold a mechanic certificate with both airframe and power plant ratings to be authorized to conduct a complete 100-hour inspection on an aircraft and approve it for return to service. Reference, 14 CFR Part 65. Okay. Next. Question 12 of 13. When overhauling electrical equipment, all necessary information should be obtained from Not selected, maintenance instructions published by the aircraft and or equipment manufacturer. Radio selected. PXPS. The necessary information for overhauling electrical equipment is provided in the maintenance instructions published by the aircraft or the equipment manufacturer. Reference, AMTG Chapter 11. Okay. Next. Question 13 of 13. Which statement about airworthiness directives ADs is true? Not selected, compliance with an applicable AD is mandatory and must be recorded in the maintenance records. Selected, EXPL. Compliance with all applicable airworthiness directives is mandatory. The fact of their compliance and the date and method of their compliance must be recorded in the aircraft's permanent maintenance records. Reference, AMTG Chapter 11. Okay, 